I'm the Audible Doctor of the Brown Bag All Stars, and we're uh, we're live in my studio in Brooklyn right now with uh, Video City TV. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of, about who I am uh, as an artist. I'm a uh, producer, a DJ, and an MC. Um, currently living in Brooklyn, and uh, yeah, I like to make music. Uh, originally from Madison, Wisconsin, but I, I've been living in Brooklyn, New York for about eight years now, a little over eight years. Um, I, uh, I moved out here after going to college for a year in Wisconsin, and there was nothing that I wanted to learn. I was n never interested in anything other than music, and uh, I kind of came out here basically under the guise of, of going to a school, um, an audio school, to further my education. I graduated school in 2004, um, and I've basically just been working and making music since. Uh, I started interning at, at Fat Beats, uh, the New York store. For those of you that don't know, don't know the, the Fat Beats New York store is a kind of legendary spot for, for hip hop heads, like underground heads. Um, a lot of artists have come through over the years. That's where I met a lot of artists that I work with. That's where I met my group, Brown Bag All Stars. Um, but I started interning there in 2004, probably, and worked my way up to, to being the, the manager and the buyer, um, right up until the store closed last year. My group, Brown Bag All Stars, we all met because we actually worked there in some capacity. Um, we, we actually got our name uh, because we used to, on Friday nights after work, we'd close up and uh, we'd, we'd play beats. You know, we were all producers and, and rappers and artists in some form. We'd all been in different groups too, uh, but we, we hadn't worked together yet. We were just kind of hanging out and, and we drank after work and stuff and play beats and freestyle and fuck around and, you know, play records and stuff on the store system. And uh, we'd go around the, the corner to this corner store to get the beer, and the dude at the, the corner store wouldn't let us leave unless every single beer was in an individual brown bag. And that's how the name Brown Bag All Stars was actually formed, was from that random dude that has no idea that you know, we're, we're a group and we got a name from him, but, um, but yeah, that's where the name came from, that's how we all met, and, uh, that's kind of the foundation for where, what I'm doing musically in, in right now, and, and, you know, that's, that's really when I got serious about making music, and that's when I kind of, um, you know, really started working harder towards, towards making music and living off music. I've worked with a lot of artists so far. Um, I did a joint with Joel Ortiz and Just Blaze called Battle Cry. Um, I did another joint with Joel Ortiz and Barrington Levy. I worked with Consequence. I uh, did a remix for Mob Deep. Um, worked with uh, Tragedy Gaddafi, J Live, Homeboy Salmon. Um, my obviously my group around like All Stars. Um, a lot, a lot of artists I uh, can't even really remember right now. And there's a lot of stuff that's that's uh, ready to go for this year too, but it's not dropped yet, so I can't really say anything yet. Um, but yeah, I've, I've worked with a fair amount of people. I'm currently working on a solo EP that'll be due out later this year called You Should Buy Me If Not Make It, um, where I'm producing and rhyming on everything, but there's a few features as well. Um, my group, Brown Bag All Stars, have an EP that we're wrapping up, two EPs that we're wrapping up, a free one that'll be hosted by 2 um, and we have one that will be for sale digitally as well. Uh, I also have uh, an album with a producer named Meticulous where he's making all the beats and I'm rhyming on everything. We have a group together called Automatic. Um, that'll be dropping later this year. And a couple other projects that haven't really been officially slated, but a couple things in the works, so um, there should be a lot of content coming this year. Um, you can always keep up with everything if you check out my website, audibledoctor.com, um, or follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash audibledoctor. It was just crazy to watch how the internet downloads and, and illegal downloading and stuff can just kind of completely destroy an entire industry, and, and, and to watch that firsthand and see labels fold and see stores fold and and just the lack of support that there is nowadays because everything's free if you really want it. Um, and, and you know, we watched it firsthand when the, when the store closed down. The last week the store was open, we had a crazy week of 
tons of artists came in, performances, signings, in stores, everything. And uh, and the entire last week was just packed full of people. And I was there for years, so I, I knew a lot of the regulars and I recognized faces and stuff. And there's people that I hadn't seen in years that showed up. And and uh, the amount of support of people who came out in the last week to, to support the store when we were closing was amazing. But it also made me kind of bitter because I was, you know, in my mind, I was like, if you guys came on a regular basis, we wouldn't be closing. You know, it's, 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 it's hard. It's understandable. And, and I, I saw it coming and, and, you know, tons of record stores are closing down. And I understand that that's where we are nowadays. Everything's digital. And, but uh, but it's, it was hard to see that era go and, and to see that the, the next generation of kids are not going to understand that. They're not going to know what what a record is or they're not going to understand what it is to buy it. Even a CD, they're just going to download it legally or they're going to download it off iTunes or they're not going to understand the physical value of, of music in the same sense that we did growing up. So I'm going to take you through my process of how I make a beat. I'm going to recreate one of the joints that I did on a project that I recently released. Um, it was called 2011 Year, the Audible Doctor Remix. This is a Blackistan remix that I did of his joint, Black Magic. Um, so this is the original sample I'm gonna play for you right now. So what I usually do with samples, I, uh, I tend to pitch them down a little bit. So if you heard the beat, it actually sounds more like this. So I, I took that sample, um, pitched it down, and then I chopped it up across these eight pads on my MPD. Um, and I'm gonna lay it down to some organ that I already laid in another program. And I'll, I'll show you how that looks. Now that the sample chops are laid down with the organ, uh, I'm gonna lay the drums. A lot of people lay drums first and lay samples stuff over that, but I do my shit backwards. But yeah, I'll show you how it sounds. The, the sample chops, the drums, the organs laid down. Um, I'm gonna lay the bass line now, which is gonna be the final part of this beat. Um, a trick that I do when laying bass lines is I always play it a few octaves above the bass note because you cannot accurately hear bass notes when you're sitting within, I think, 10, five or 10 feet of speak, something like that. Um, ba bass, on some science shit, <laughs> bass, uh, bass wavelengths are, are much longer so you can't actually accurately hear them when you're close to the system. So I always played a few octaves above so I know it's in key and then I'll shift it down and then to the, to the level that I want that. So I'm gonna lay it down, I'm gonna play around right now and figure out what the bass line is. I'll lay it down. And that's pretty much the whole beat. Uh, as it was released. Um, there's a lot of, in the mixing process, there's a lot of filtering and, and stuff like that, but that's essentially the whole beat put together. And that's my process and um, how I make a beat.